Hey, I'm Dr. Mike Littman from Concordia University, Wisconsin. Uh, I guess I'm here to introduce our master's programs in computer science, information technology, and our MBA in MIS. Um, so, should I just get started? Yeah. You want me to Good talk day. to this? You want me to talk to these guys? No, no, you can talk to these guys and that will be recorded. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. So, uh, do you guys know where Wisconsin is? Do you know where Milwaukee is? Mm -hmm. How many of you have heard of Chicago? Oh, yeah. You've heard of Chicago, right? Okay, so we're about 1.5 hours north of Chicago. Okay. Um, so our uh, we do get snow. Have you seen snow before? Uh, not here. Any. Okay, not here, right? So uh, in uh, December and January, the average temperature is around zero Celsius, so it's cold. Right, a lot colder in here, but most of the year it's very nice. So our summers are like 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Nice, nice weather. A lot cooler than here, but still warm. Okay. Um, so we have uh, uh, our campus has, uh, as far as you guys are undergrads, right? So you're looking at possibly doing grad school. Yeah. Okay. So our master's programs uh, across the entire university have about 4,000. Um, students in them and we have about 400 international students so about 10% of our graduate population is international students now specifically so I'm the director of the master's degree in computer science um, and I teach in the computer science department so specifically in our department we have three degrees so we have two and then we have a partnership with the business school with their MBA program so we have a master's of computer science we have a master's of information technology and we have an mba in management information systems all three of these programs are what are known as stem programs so what that means is if you come to the united states and you complete a master's degree in any field you typically get to stay in the united states for one year to work after that in a stem program you can apply for an extension and stay in for an additional two years. So our three programs will allow you to stay in the United States and work after you've completed the program for up to three years without a worker's visa. Okay, so kind of a, a nice perk. Um, so uh, the way our programs work is you can complete them in 1.5 years, okay, so fairly quickly. Uh, our, pro we have a, a, our program is based on semesters. So a semester at our school is 16 weeks, and we split it into two halves. So we have the first eight weeks, A session, and the second eight weeks, B session. Um, the first semester, the fall semester, starts at the end of August and goes until the middle of December. Then we have a seven-week break. And then our spring semester begins at the very end of January and goes until the middle of May. And then there's a three-month break. After that so if you guys wanted to travel back home something like that you could do those types of things all right so now uh, every one of our programs has 12 total prep 12 total classes that you have to take so you would take to go full-time in the program you would take two classes per eight weeks so the first term in the first eight weeks you would take two classes session B you would take two classes so now you completed four classes in one semester next semester four next semester for now you graduate 1.5 years right okay so our classes meet one day a week for four hours so if you're taking two classes you'll have to come to school two times a week for four hours each night why do we do it as an evening class and why do we have it meet only once per week well we live our school is about 20 minutes from a uh, from Milwaukee Wisconsin which is a, a town with a metro population of around 1 million people. And we're about one and a half hours from Chicago, which is a population of, depending on how you do the math, let's say 8 million people. Big, right? There are lots and lots and lots of technology companies in these two cities. So we wanted to encourage our students to go get internships. As an international student, you can work, well, with a student visa, you can work on campus doing office work, something like that, making around $8, eight US dollars per hour. Or you're also eligible to work an internship off campus 
provided it's related to your field of study. All right. So um, given that, uh, we want to encourage you to go out and get an internship from a company in the technology field. So uh, are you guys interested in masters of computer science, masters of IT, the MBA, which, which would you be interested in? Computer science. Computer science? I'm looking for electronics. Electronics? Okay, I'm going to come back to that in a second. Computer science? Aircraft maintenance. Say this again? Aircraft maintenance technician. Okay, aircraft maintenance technician. We'll come back to that too. Finance. Master in finance. Master in finance, which would be our MBA program. Okay, so let me hit those in order. Uh, I'm going to skip computer science for a second because that, that one's easy. <laughs> Um, for electronics, our master's program in computer science does not have an electronics component. So we're a theoretical uh, program. So primarily it's going to be computer programming, uh, computer architecture, but the theory side of things, um, uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, things like that. So if you are looking for electronics, probably not a good fit. If you're interested in doing um, more of a traditional computer science program certainly would be a good fit and then that can complement an electronics mm -hmm. career uh, from the perspective that anymore when you work with electronics a lot of times you're working with programmable boards so you write software for the board and then the board would get plugged into your larger project right okay so potentially masters of computer science could be a fit at our school um, I don't believe we have a program in aircraft maintenance so that would probably be off the table at Concordia so I don't uh, um, we don't have anything like that there you're looking for an MBA in finance okay so uh, some dynamics of that uh, in the MBA program so this would be in the, in the business school we have uh, there there's two programs one that we really promote called management information systems uh, that is a stem program Okay, and our STEM program allows you to stay in the country for three years, like I mentioned. Okay, well, an MBA with an emphasis on finance would not be STEM, which is fine, but that's going to give you only one year of OPT, which means if you were going to stay in the United States working, you would then need to get a um, sponsorship for an H-1B to worker visa to stay in the country and continue working. So just something to keep in mind. And so my PhD is in computer science. I'm the director of the Masters of Computer Science program. So my focus area is kind of in that, but I'm also talking about IT and management information systems. Okay, what uh, areas are you guys interested in? BBA. Say, say this one more time. BBA. Oh, BBA. Oh, so you're looking for a bachelor's yes. in computer science? Yes. Okay, what about you? Oh, you're just hanging out. All right. <laughs> All right. So, um, so fine. We have uh, undergraduate programs in computer science as well as information technology. So typically, the what I tell people is they're different sides of the same coin. So computer science spends about seventy-five percent of their time creating new things, writing software that does something, and then about twenty-five percent of their time leveraging or using things that somebody else has created. So maybe you're incorporating the Google Maps API into your software that somebody else wrote, that kind of thing. Where an IT professional spends 75% of their time using things that have already been created and only 25% of their time creating new things. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on whether you want to spend your time writing software or do you want to spend your time trying to solve kind of technology-based problems by bringing a bunch of other products together and getting them to talk to each other to solve problems. Okay, so that's kind of the IT uh, world. Now, in general, getting into the university from an international student perspective, we require a 6.5 in the IELTS. We will conditionally admit at a lower score of a 6 or even as low as a 5.5. Um, the acceptance would be uh, pending a uh, English as a second language program. So we have an English as a second language program. We can write the I-20 for, uh, for your student visa with the actual program of study in mind um, to benefit the process of getting you the, uh, uh, the student visa, but you would have to complete the English as a second language program and then you could start your program of study. Um, for 
grad programs, grad students, we are re we require a minimum GPA of a 3.0. Now that's a little bit weird because, um, as you know, your GPAs from India are based on test scores, right? And when we put that through our process and convert that to an American GPA, sometimes we get kind of funky results because it's not always a real accurate number that we get on the, on the back end. So as a you know medium-sized private university like Concordia, we're able to go in and look at your specific test scores, see where your weaknesses are. Um, you know we don't have a limit on backlogs, so sometimes that drags the. Uh, the score down if you had to take the same test 10 times or something like that, right? So we're able to go in and see where your weaknesses are, and then we could also conditionally accept maybe pending you taking one of our undergrad classes or something like that in the field, in the area where you were weak, something like that. Um, so these are flexibilities that we have where we can treat you as a person as opposed to a number, right? Mm -hmm. So we can look at the specific details associated with you. Um, okay. Uh, let's see, what else am I missing here? Um, questions that often come up from students, especially today, has to do with the, uh, the Trump factor. You've heard of Donald Trump, right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, we have a little bit of an issue uh, there in the, the, the White House. Uh, you know, he was saying all these things, like he was going to build a wall between us and Mexico and things like that. There is no wall. Nobody put up a wall. Okay, people still can come through the border and, and, and things like that. Um, the universities in the United States want international students to continue coming in. Okay, I mentioned a few minutes ago that our graduate programs uh, have 4,000 total students and 10% of them are international students. In our computer science program and our information technology program, 90% of our students are international. And of those, 90% are from South India. Okay? So that's where our students come from. And then we sprinkle in, we have a, let's see, we have several Americans in there. We have a Vietnamese guy. Actually, we have two Vietnamese guys. So, you know, we have a, you know, a pretty good, you know, international representation, but a majority of our students come from South India. Okay? And that's true of many, many, many universities when it comes to computer science. So we want you to come to the United States. We want you to study in our programs. We want you to work in our industry. We want you to stay. <laughs> okay, a lot of you come back to India afterwards, but we'd like for you to stay in the country and continue to pour money into our economy and that kind of stuff. So having said that, um, you don't need to be overly concerned about coming over to the United States and getting kicked out. All right, we'll get your student visa approved. You'll come in and you'll do your studies. If it's in a STEM program, you get three years of runway afterwards so you can get your experience, things like that. Um, if you go on to a master's, you'll just stay on a student visa, right? Um, that kind of thing. Uh, but, you know, you're not, they're not going to show up on your doorstep one day and tell you to get out of the country, all right, unless you do something bad, break the law, something, you know, something that you shouldn't be doing, okay? But they're just not going to sign some law that says get out, all right? So you don't need to worry about that. Um, that's not how the country works. All right, you could have these politicians play the political game, right? And they say what they need to say to get elected. And then you have other politicians that say, we're not going to let this happen. And then you have a kind of a balancing act. So I realized that in the um, uh, your news, Trump gets shown as very negative, right? Um, and in our news as well. In our news as well, primarily he's portrayed as, as fairly negative. Now, an interesting you know, side thing, you know, this is really nothing to do with the program here in general, but at my hotel last night, I was talking to some Russian students who were visiting India. And I thought it was an interesting question to ask. I said, how is Trump portrayed in Russia? He's, he's portrayed very positively, okay? Mm -hmm. So you get a very different spin depending on what news channels you're watching and where you are in the world and stuff like that. So I want to assure you that the United States wants you to come study there, okay? And we're not going to kick you out. <laughs> Make sense? Yeah. And keep in mind, they sent me all the way across the world to come meet with you guys and tell you I want you to come to Concordia. Okay? We don't typically do that if we don't want you at our school. Make some sense? Okay, that was a 20-hour flight. <laughs> that was how I 
<laughs> I spent some time <laughs> to, to get over here. Um, so let's see, what else can I tell you? Um, the snow, not really that big of a deal. Uh, one thing that I typically do, and I can uh, give you my card here with my email on it, uh, I encourage you to send me an email, uh, remind me about the programs you're interested in. Uh, one thing I can do if you would like is I can introduce you to a current student that's in our program from South India. From the guy I've been introducing folks to is a guy from Hyderabad. So he can tell you what is Wisconsin like, what's housing like, what does it cost, how did he find roommates, where does he eat, you know, all sorts of stuff like that that is going to be and, you know, that you're going to be anxious about because you're going to a whole new culture, right? Just like I came here to a whole new culture and I had to learn to eat biryani with my hand, right? But not the left hand. <laughs> so, so now I'm, I, I eat like a native, so, you know, we do the thing. So, you know, you're going to be stuck in a brand new culture and he can help, you know, assure you that you'll make it. You'll get through. There's plenty of support. There's plenty of things at Concordia where we can uh, help you out. Um, so I'm happy to do that. I encourage you to email me and ask me to make that introduction for you so you can ask some questions. And if you come to Concordia, great. I'd love to have you. If you end up saying this is not really for me, I think I'm going to stay in India, that's well, okay too, right? We want what's best for you and, you know, we hope our master's programs are a good fit for you. We hope our bachelor's programs are a good fit for you. Um, so you've had computer programming, right? Have you had any computer programming in your... Electronics classes? Uh, not really, but we have uh, a lang few language, just a small. Okay, so you're familiar with programming yeah. to a certain extent. Okay. Coding. Yeah. So, did you, oh, did you like it? Did you yeah, like yeah. programming? Did you feel like you were you got yeah, good I experience was, in there? Do you want more? Yeah, I was into it too, and I was into it. I okay. really, really like that. So another thing, uh, let me actually just so I don't forget, let me hand out some business cards. But um, I'll just give each of you guys one. <laughs> Passes back to the back. Uh, so one thing I uh, would I'm going to recommend that you do is when you email me, also ask me to send you my programming videos. So I teach all the programming classes. It's my research area. So I'm our software programmer guy. I'm, I'm pretty good at it. And I've been teaching for 20 years. So I've been teaching longer than most of you have been a, have been a thing, right? <laughs> okay. So um, ask me for those videos. So what I do is I record all my classes. So I can, I'll send you like the first three um, semesters of programming, our entire programming sequence. So you can kind of go through that at your own pace, learn programming the way I teach it, uh, get exposed to it from that perspective. And, you know, hopefully that also then gives you an idea of how I teach. Since in the computer science program, I'm going to be teaching at least half your classes. Um, that's, I primarily teach in the masters of computer science. I design the program, it's my program, blah, 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 but we have... You know, my colleagues in the department who are also PhDs with years of teaching experience, things like that, they teach some of the other classes in, in, in the program. But anything dealing with computer programming will be me. Okay? So if you're interested in those videos, just tell me in that email and I'll send you a link to it. It's on YouTube. Okay? And I encourage you to go through that so you can get a feel for what our classes are like. Okay? Um, our classes are... Uh, in the undergrad, our average class size is probably 15 to 20 students for a number of students in a class. In the graduate program, it's 10 to 15 students. So it's a smaller, smaller group of students. All the students will know each other, even in the undergrad. All the students will know the teacher. Uh, the teachers will know all the students. I go out to lunch and stuff with my students. We've been to Indian restaurants. We've done hookah. You know, we, we, you know, so these are my friends. So. You know, you got to keep in mind, when you guys leave India, you're in a brand new culture, and you're, you need people that understand the world you come from, right? Okay? So you're not just there as a student when you come to Concordia, you're there as part of our family. Okay? And we want to make sure that you're being taken care of and you're you know, healthy, not just in the classroom, but also outside, you're getting jobs, you're safe, you're feeding yourself, <laughs> you know, all, the, all these other things. You're able to find roommates, uh, all these things like that. All right, so what have I missed? What questions do you have that I can... Okay. So, <clears throat> the tuition fee per credit. Ah. Well, okay, so uh, 
to do full time in our master's program. Uh, the uh, it costs thirteen thousand dollars per year. The um, so it'd be twenty thousand dollars total for a master's degree, one point five years, right? All right. Um, with a master's in computer science, the average salary that students come out with is about eighty thousand U.S. dollars, eight zero. So very high salary, right? All right. So um, obviously, it's very economical. We have a, a very competitive price program. We have a high acceptance rate for uh, student visas, and our students get jobs. So we have close to a 100% placement rate. If you come to our program, you take it seriously, you get decent grades, you'll get a job. And that job will pay well. All right? Um, so uh, that's, that's one question uh, related to that. Let me, did I talk about IELTS yet? No. Uh, well, you go ahead. So, what about the employability ratio? I mean, employability percentage post masters. For our master's program, it's hundred percent. It's hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. If a if a student got through our program, they they will get a job. Uh, that's really good. Yeah. So. Uh, are we not supposed to write DI for this? Say this again. Uh, are we not supposed to write DI for this? You mentioned. Correct. You don't have to. So our program does not require the GRE or the GMAT. So no entrance exams. Um, we, I think I mentioned, did I mention IELTS yet? Okay, so our IELTS, we require 6.5, but we'll accept up down to a 5.5 situationally. All right, um, yeah, so I mentioned that. Um, no GRE, uh, no application fee. What about the PT? Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, go ahead. PT, Pearson's test? Oh, we do not, we, oh, oh, for English. Yeah, we do accept it. Uh, I think IELTS is the most uh, popular, as well as TOEFLs. We, I think we accept all the English tests. We do, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I will have to confirm that with our international folks, but I'm I'm 99% positive the answer is yes. We take any of the tests. Okay, but most of the students nowadays are looking out for PT because of the dates availability. Yeah, so, uh, we're very, I think we're very flexible. If you can prove to us that you have the English skills, then we, we can make it work. All right. Um, so what was I, uh, what was I saying with just of that uh, IELTS test. Trying to think where I was going with the last uh, the last comment. What were we were just talking about? Fee structure. Yeah. You are done with the fee structure. Fee structure. Ah, we're talking about application fee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, no application fee. Uh, now, if you go to the website, it lists that there is one. But if you talk to uh, your recruiters, your consultants, they will, they have a special code, okay, that will get you no application fee, so it's free. Um, also, uh, the website will list that there is a deposit that's also waived if you work through uh, these guys, okay, and um, uh, the advocates folks have the, uh, the information for the, the secret code for getting the, the deposit waived, so we want to make it as easy as possible for you to apply to Concordia. Does that make some sense? Yeah. All right. Anything else? Uh, do you have any graduate assistantships? Okay. Yeah. No, we don't have graduate assistantships. We don't have scholarships. Um, but there's many, many, many internships available in the area that will pay reasonable money. Okay. So uh, we don't have anything official on campus, but internships are available, and you can make reasonable money through those. Uh, there's also some jobs that you can work on campus that don't necessarily pay all that great by U.S. standards. They're like eight, eight U.S. dollars per hour, uh, and you can only work up to 18 credit hours uh, or 18 hours per week while you're in school. Um, over the summer, you can work more hours if you're staying there over the summer or over breaks. But while school is in session, you can only work 18 hours. So most of our students work internships off campus, and that's why we have the classes only in the evening. Or the graduate programs. Undergraduate is traditional, so you might have a class at eight in the morning, you might have a class at noon, stuff like that. So you'll have a normal, normal course loads. You probably wouldn't be working a whole lot while you're doing an undergrad, part-time job, something like that. What else? The security part. How secure is your location? Yeah. So the university itself is right. So on. Uh, the east side of the university is Lake Michigan, which is a very, very, very large lake. Okay? Nobody's going to swim up 
Mm -hmm. Okay, to you, uh, uh, it's the second largest lake in the United States. It's big, 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 big. Okay, so um, then to the south of the university is a major highway, a road. So the university is basically completely blocked in from people just wandering on the campus. So the only folks that are going to be on campus are going to be faculty, staff, employees, and students. Yep, so very, very safe. Not a lot of crime on campus anyways. The city that the school is in is a, is a town called Mequon, Wisconsin, about 20 minutes north of Milwaukee, hour and a half north of Chicago. Um, Mequon is a very rich town. So uh, it's the, the average earning in Mequon is very, very high, so it's where the rich people live. Okay, Very safe. <laughs> very safe in the town, lots of police presence, things like that. So the chance of anything bad happening in the area is, is very low. Okay, so I think it's a safe place to, to come. You don't really need to worry about, uh, worry about that. Uh, anything else? Housing. Housing. So that's where I mentioned earlier that uh, uh, I can introduce you to uh, current grad students from Hyderabad who can explain to you um, how uh, housing might work, finding an apartment, finding roommates, things like that. A lot of our students live together. They go away and get an apartment together. So graduate students do not live on campus. You guys would have to get an apartment off campus somewhere, things like that. Undergraduate students do live on campus. Um, the first year, you're required to live on campus. After the first year, you can move off campus if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it. Just live on campus. Our entire, I mean, we have a, a good-sized campus. Concordia is one of seven um, private universities in the Concordia system. Um, but we're the biggest. So Concordia, Wisconsin is the largest of those. But the campus is going to very likely be a lot smaller than the campuses you're used to. Okay, so you can walk all the way around campus in 20 minutes. You know, it's not that giant. And our campus is completely connected through the building. So when you go in the main entrance, you can walk to all the other buildings all inside, which you'll like in November when it's cold. Because <laughs> you won't have to walk outside to get to your classes. And if you live on campus, you'll never have to walk outside at all if you don't want to. You can just stay in for eight months at a time. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, so... Specifics about housing for off-campus living. I, I mean, I'm not going to have the inside information for that. When I introduce you to the guy from Hyderabad, who's one of our current students, he'll be able to tell you the difficulty of getting an apartment, the cost, how many roommates he has, how did he find the roommates, all that stuff. Things that'll be very meaningful and from somebody who, who's from your part of the world. Yep. Yeah. Uh, how about the housing for the undergrad students on campus? Do you have one? Uh, well, yeah, we, so we have several uh, residence halls, okay. um, and uh, so they're, they're nice, they're air-conditioned, the, uh, uh, typically there's two to three roommates uh, per, uh, per room, it really depends, a couple of the residence halls have like suites set up where there's like a, a living room, and then there's like three or four bedrooms, mm -hmm. something like that, so the students in general like, like the residence halls, they're comfortable, they're safe, uh, we keep updating them. So two of our residence halls are basically brand new buildings. Um, we have, I think, two other ones that are pretty old, but they're kind of next on the chopping block for getting updates. But when I say they're pretty old, they're pretty old for by the United States standards. Okay, I think you'll find it being a fairly substantial bump up <laughs> from, from some of the things I've seen here, right? So. I think you'll find them very comfortable, uh, the, the residence hall. But if you can get into the upperclassmen ones that are brand new, it's basically like being in a five-star hotel. They're nice. <laughs> the dorms, okay? Um, the view is really, really good. We're right off the lake. Um, so when you look out your window, you're basically going to be looking out at the ocean. You know, from your perspective. It's technically a lake, but you can't see the other side. Right? It's a three-hour boat ride straight across <laughs> to get to the other side. It's a big lake. What else? Uh, I think we have covered everything. Okay. Uh, I've given everybody yeah. business cards. Yeah. So do email me. I'm expecting you to email me. So the, And it's going to come right to me, not to some secretary. I'm going to reply personally tonight at my hotel. 
I'll send you the videos, ask me for the videos, I'll make the introduction to the, uh, the current student from Hyderabad. Take advantage of these things. Even if you don't end up at Concordia, I'd love to have you at Concordia, right? I want to have you there. But at the very least, talk, you know, take advantage of being able to talk to a guy who's from your place and made it over to the United States and he can tell you what life is like there. I mean, that's a free opportunity, right? You can't beat that. So take advantage of that. Do email me, and I'm, I'm happy to help. I want to see you guys at, at Concordia, but I want to see you successful, too. And if that means another school or that means staying here, so be it. But I'd love to see you at Concordia. Okay. Anything else you want me to say? Want me to talk about? You want to just wave at the camera? Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's what I got for you. Great. That was really great. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye. Thank you.